I'm focused on growing the Profitable Relationships Company, which is a very small little boutique uh, coaching and consulting firm, um, which is mostly me and uh, one other person. And we're just really working with consultants, professional service firms, coaches. Welcome everybody to the strategy show. I'm your host Simon Severino and today with us the CEO of ProfitableRelationships.com where he helps consultants get ideal clients by becoming an under the radar leader in their industry. He is focused on helping ordinary people become extraordinary consultants. Hello everybody, Dov Gordon. Hey Simon, thanks for having me. It's so cool and here in Vienna the weather is so cold and gray and you just had in Israel the the hottest two weeks of the year. I'm so jealous. We're, we're fortunately past that. Um, it was we had, we had a two week heat wave and um, it wasn't the hottest but it was quite hot. Um, we've had it was uh, we hit about I mean, where I live anyway 40 Two forty-three Celsius. That's about one hundred and eight Fahrenheit, I think. Um, a couple of months back, so that was hot. I'm super excited to have you here because you have brought a ton of tips for our community. So we will talk about how the right relationships can be your unfair advantage. How you can become the owner of your network which equals to being owner of a casino if you do it right and how oh, you can introduce <laughs> leverage into your network everybody this is the master of networking here and we can learn so much today you were even recommended by a by many people and uh, from different from different sources. So the universe really wants you to be here and share this with the community and I'm super pumped. So Dov, tell us a little bit, what are you currently creating? I'm focused on growing the Profitable Relationships Company, which is a very small little boutique uh, coaching and consulting firm, um, which is mostly me and uh, one other person. And we're just really working with consultants, professional service firms, coaches, experts to help them create a consistent flow of ideal clients through uh, what I think of as kind of um, um, backwards networking, if you like. You know, whereas rather than you're going to different events, um, <clears throat> you're, you're forming what I call an alchemy network. And that's a method of becoming an under the radar leader in your industry. And, you know, I mean, I, I can easily talk straight for the next two hours. So you guys stop me. But uh, the, the, the it's, it's not a BNI network. It's not that type of thing. It was probably at least partially inspired by when I was a teenager and I was read an article about uh, Penn Gillette from the Penn and Teller duo about how it, this is going back in the 90s, mid 90s. And I read about how Penn Gillette had this uh, email group, <clears throat> a listserv of, of like 20 something friends of his and he could send an email and they, they all get it and they can all reply and it would go to everybody and i was thinking like wow that's really that that's remarkable you know any time of day he wants you can he wants to you know it's only people that he lets in and it's just an amazing opportunity to just throw ideas around get ideas uh, from people um and that that was planted a seed and when i eventually started what i'm doing now about 10 years ago uh I, I didn't quite know where I was going, but uh, that was probably there. So it's really, it's about forming a, a network comprised either of colleagues or of ideal clients or of recommenders. And depending on what you're trying to accomplish, um, there's different, you know, different ones will make sense. I'm giving you the overview, jump in anytime. And it's just a, the goal is that positions you as what I think of as an under the radar leader in your industry. And it's, that's it's backwards networking. What's what's the opposite? Oh, well, there's actually more than one opposite in this case. I mean, you could be going out to other lots of different um, different events and networks and so on. And you're just one of the attendees. Um, but it's also it's not about trying to 
reach, you know, or it, it's not like, like selling a course or something online where you just want to get as many people in as possible. It's, it's about a combination. It's, it's finding the balance between quality and quantity. You know, when I'm helping people set up their network, design and then set it up, launch, lead, leverage, monetize. So, you know, one of the, the, um, sometimes people wonder, well, why would they join my network? What's the, what's the value that I'm bringing? Um, that they they can't just they can join this other group. There's so many different things they could they can they can join, and the the answer is a combination of curation and conversation. And it's the way you curate. It's who you would actually accept into your group versus others. And before I started my first like again, I think of it as an alchemy network. I I did didn't set out to do that. I joined a number of different online forums. I was looking for other people like me at the time, going back 10 plus years, who were marketing and selling to entrepreneurs, consultants, experts, coaches, and so on, and were looking to do cross promotions, joint venture promotions of one kind or another. And I was looking for a certain kind of people. I was looking for people who didn't see their email list as their personal ATM machine, which I don't know if you remember back then, that was the way a lot of, uh, you know, the on online marketing was relatively young and that was that was how people talked and that never appealed to me my attitude is if if someone gave me their email address that there's a person there and and they have dreams and aspirations and you know my job is to see how to help them get closer to them uh, and and some of them will find a good reason to pay me and that's fine so i was looking for people who saw their subscribers as well as their colleagues uh, in, in a respectful way and, and took a long-term perspective. And by joining several different online communities, I came to see it's remarkable how different they are. The, the culture was different. It's just the, and it was all influenced by whoever was leading it. And that's why I'm convinced and I, I see it that even if people are a member in some other network or some other association, many of them will join both and uh, your ideal colleagues, your ideal clients, however it is that you want to design it, they will join your network. Not everybody, but they will, and they'll want to participate because on, only you will curate it the way you would and run it the way you would. And um, that's, I mean, that's the bottom line. We can go in greater depth if you want. Absolutely. So uh, I am a consultant in Malta, and I, I do financial consulting. Uh, how, how does it start? If I enter, if I enter your your network, how do I find my ideal clients in there, or how does it work? Well, um, I'm not. If you're a financial consultant and you're looking to build your own alchemy network as a way of of growing your business, then there are a number of questions that we would need to ask, right? Such as who is your ideal client? What is it that you're selling? What's the value of what you're selling? Because we need a it has to be. It has to feed your business. You know, you mentioned earlier about how, um, you know, the casino. What? What? I'm not, I'm not saying it's like owning a casino, but it. When you own the network, you have an advantage, just like when you own the casino, you have an edge, right? So when you own the network, I'm I'm constantly being introduced to great people. We were introduced by somebody who, um, you know, who said, "Hey, you should talk to Doe because she knows she's in my one of my networks and." understands what I'm doing and thought it'd be a really good introduction. I get that all the time. And it's like, I have this golden platform where people are, are continuously making valuable introductions that leads to things. Um, at the same time, they're doing that because as part of my networks, they're benefiting in, in, in several different ways. Right? So if you're, if, uh, if you're this theoretical consultant, I guess the first question I would ask you is, well, who are these clients you're looking to reach? And then we would, analyze or figure out uh, does it make sense is it possible for you to form a network that is comprised of your ideal clients that would be the first place that i would look uh, second place i would look is well uh, maybe we should form a network comprised of colleagues people others who are marketing and selling to audiences that include your um your your ideal clients and then what we do is systematically and consistently um, make it easy for them to put you in front of their networks as well as for them as well. Uh, and the last opportunity, the third option, which you would go to if those first two aren't a good fit is recommenders. So for example, I have a client who he's a consultant and he, and he works with large companies, half a billion dollars and up several billion dollars. A, a project of his is $200,000 up to low seven figures. It can go from three months up to several years. 
And, um, you know, for, for him though, what he's doing, it cuts across multiple departments in these large companies. And usually the CEO or somebody right there at the top needs to be involved in deciding to do it or not, because not, not only the cost, but also the disruption, right? The involving so many people or, or rather so many departments. So for him, uh, you know, I'm sure it, you know, it definitely is possible to form a network of CEOs, but, the, but it's, it's really hard. It's really hard at that level, CEOs of billion dollar companies, right? So we realize that it, that it's a lot easier if we get his foot in the door a, a level or two down and he's and still senior level executives with responsibility and a budget. And he's been forming a network of those, the, those people. Um, he's been able to help them um, in certain ways, uh, you know, uh, through the network as well as some projects. And then that's a way that's an in where they say, Hey, they can go to their boss, the CEO and say, Hey, I've been working with uh, Mike. And he helped us solve this problem, which is completely within my area, my domain. And there's so much more that we really need to do, but that involves the rest of the company. I really think we need to sit down and discuss it. You want to make your sales more repeatable and reliable? Do you want to have less volatility and more growth in your revenue per month? At Strategy Sprints, we do only one thing, strategy and sprints. Strategy means having more revenue through a better offer. And sprints means having more energy in your team every week. Check out if your ROI is as high as it is for most service-based and online businesses and startups we work with, which is over 100%. You can see it in just 15 minutes by going to strategysprints.com slash sales and completing our online exercise to know what your ROI would be with our accelerator program. We are ready to sprint. Are you? Right. Cool. So, so walk us through the, the, the first week. What happens in the first week? I, I am this Malta consultant. I become GVMM member. And uh, so you will, you will find me, you will help me sort out first. Okay, wait. So you're asking me about if you were to join my network? Yeah. I'm entering JVMM. What happens? Oh, okay. So, so JVMM is a network that I started about 10 years ago and it is comprised of colleagues of mine, right? And as colleagues, meaning people who are using the internet to market and sell to other professional service firms, consulting firms, and so on. Um, and then we, we introduce each other. We cross promote each other. We're actually having our monthly 90 minute zoom call uh, in a few hours. So, um, uh, the first thing that we do actually is, is I send out an email introducing you to everybody and then over the next 24 hours, you'll get dozens of replies welcoming you. Uh, it's the only time that I encourage anybody to send an email that has no value add, like you're not actually adding to the conversation because otherwise we don't need that. Um, but it's important that all of our new members feel the energy. They get a sense of who's in the network. Very often they'll, they'll realize, Oh, I know, I know you, I know you it just happens that way. Small world. And, uh, and they get that, that sense of, of uh, the energy um, and also gives them uh, people that they can reach out, pick out three people and, and reach out and say, hey, let's talk, right? In all likelihood, they'll introduce, uh, they'll invite you to a call to get to know each other. And so we have a combination of ways that we interact and uh, it's, it's one-to-one, it's small groups, it's the whole larger group, it's uh, email-based, it's uh, Zoom, Zoom get-togethers. And, you know, I, I, I take a light touch. I don't try to control very much uh, other than who gets in, who stays in, and I kind of lead things. And I've been doing that for 10 years now, and we've just been getting stronger and, and growing over the time. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's, that's what your first week roughly looks like. And I, I also have, I have a sequence that goes out to our new customers. I knew not, not customers, I mean, new members. Um, and, and I'll say this also, just kind of a bit side point. This is what's remarkable, really. You know, I've only started really helping other people set up their own networks within the last year or so, because I've been doing this for myself for many years. But I had the expert's curse. You know the expert's curse? That's where you're really good at something, but you figure what's the big deal? Everybody can do it. And you know, I figured like, you know, anybody can do what I'm doing. Um, but I've come to really understand. You know, I started helping one client set up a network, and and I realized that he was getting stuck on things that were very obvious to me, and then. You know, helping another person, and the same type of thing happened. It's not like it's not like it's very difficult, but um, 
everybody's coming at it with their own experience, their own perspective, their own fears and worries and creative ideas that might <laughs> just really shoot everything in the foot, you know? So, um, uh, so, so there was an, I was running my own thing, but that's what I, that's why I shifted to ProfitableRelationships.com. But one of the things that I realized is that, you know, there is a modest membership fee in most cases. It could be anywhere from free to a thousand, two thousand dollars a year. That's what I recommend. And for a lot of consultants, they're able to turn a lot of the relationship marketing that they're doing for free into an additional fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar a year revenue stream, which isn't bad. I mean. It, especially because literally most of what you're doing, I I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago, and he said to me, he's like, oh, you know, I I'm talking, you know, he in, as part of his marketing and sales, he's talking to six to eight people a day. I said, you really should do this, because a lot of those people they may not be ready for whatever it is you're doing yet, but here's what you do, you know, if they're the right kind of person for who you really could be doing business with in the, in the future, what you say to them is, hey, you know, let's say they say, you know. Uh, they say to you, Simon, you know what? I, I love what you're doing. It sounds wonderful, uh, could, but we're just, we've just got so much on our plate. Could you get back to me in six months? I mean, we've anybody who's selling anything has had that, right? Six months, we'll be ready. And you're not a, you know, you, you're, you take initiative. So uh, five months, after five months, you reach out and you say, hey, checking back, want to see how you're doing. And they say, oh, Simon, I'm so glad you got back to me, but I just wish you would have gotten back to me a few weeks ago because last month, we talked to this other per person, this competitor of yours, really, and we started with them. I, I just completely forgot. So what could you do? I mean, we could add them to our email list and send out emails, all right? Uh, and I recommend that. I think that that's important, uh, obviously, with permission. And then, you know, but now they're getting an email from you, you know, maybe every few days, once a week, once a month, depending on how you do it. But you're still not getting anything back from them. It's one-way communication, assuming they even read it. You don't hear anything about what's actually going on to give you a clue. You could send them stuff like, hey, I came across this article. I thought about you. I thought you might like it. Often that's forced, right? It doesn't feel genuine. Um, and also, it, it's a good thing to do. You know, Far better is if you say, you say hey, Simon, um, I'll say it to you, Simon, I, I get it. Six months uh, that makes a lot of sense. I totally understand your priorities currently, and then I, I appreciate you sharing that with me. X, Y, and Z is an issue that you're dealing with now and in the future. I lead a network of cura a curated network of people like you and some ahead of you who are, you know, who are dealing with these types of things. Why don't you join the network? That, you know, it's not going to take any more time than you want to put in. You want to be involved, be very active. You can be very active. You want to be less active, you be less active. It's a, it's a fantastic community of the, exactly the kind of people that you want to be spending more time with and talking to. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's a hardly, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars a year, whatever the price is. And, and there's a really good chance you can say, yeah. And suddenly the relationship has changed. Now, you know, after six weeks, you can say, reach out to, the, to them and say, hey, um, let's get on a quick 10 minute call just so I can understand what you're dealing with currently so I can use that to direct the conversations in the network in a way that's valuable for you as well as for everybody else. I can, this could be somebody else I'm talking to that you didn't get to meet yet and I'll make an introduction. Let's, let's get on for 10 minutes. And that's how I get to keep my finger on the pulse of the ideal potential clients. That makes sense? Absolutely. And so many have this conversation and then, well, yes, let's keep in touch, but then it's really hard. So exactly. I'm just thinking the one obstacle to start this is just the fear of what if I send out the first email? Because uh, everybody can, can, can create a, a nice name for, for this club or group and, uh, and, and start it. The, the, the first fear might be, what if they come into the group and it's not big enough? So how, how big should be or how to start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how, how, to, how to start is, uh, that's, you know, that's something that I definitely, that I, I'm helping clients with that, but at, from a high level, what I can tell you is that you really want to get your first five to eight members as fast as possible, right? You don't need a lot more than that. You don't need a lot more than that. Um, 
you know, what I'm actually doing with clients, my goal is that within the first 90 days is that we get them to where they have their first eight to 15 clients and $10,000 or more in booked revenue from their new network. Okay. So that's, that's our goal. Um, it could happen faster. It could happen a little slower. It depends on how fast they move. Right. I mean, it, does, it really could happen in four to six weeks if they're fast uh, and depends on, on what, you know, where they're starting. You know, somebody who knows a lot of people and, and just realizes that this is an amazing opportunity to create instead of having all those one point uh, you know, relationships, I can, you know, you get tremendous leverage by owning the network, by leading the network. That's like the, the advantage of the casino owner, right? Um, just, it just, uh, it gives you certain relationship privileges that, that you just wouldn't have otherwise. So, you know, you ideally, your first members will be people that you know ideally and you want to start with that and and again it's not like you don't need a big network this is not about big it's about curated and conversations big we can get anywhere now i think most of my clients would like to grow their network over the you know over a year or two to where it has 50 100 150 maybe even 200 members um but you don't need to because if you keep in if you keep in mind like really what's the goal here, right? It's it's building again. I think of this as a as a golden platform. If you have 35, 45, 50, 75 well placed people across your industry, and their network, their members in your network, uh, you're not going to know 75 people really well. But you could be you know you can have a like some kind of relationship with them. Um, let's say you want to speak at an industry event. There are people in your network, if you did, if you built it right, who can help you get, get on whatever industry stage you want, right? Either they themselves or they know somebody who, like, they can make those introductions. Uh, let's say you're part of what you're doing for marketing might be running a podcast or interviews, and you want to be connected with certain people you'd like to have on your show. There are people who can make those connections. And let's say you want to publish a book. Let's say you want to, um, I mean, pretty much anything you want to do you now have uh, access to people who can make it smoother, faster, cheaper, higher quality, better. It's just, um, it's so simple and it's not, you know, I think that's deceptively simple, right? It's deceptively simple. And um, it just gives you a remarkable edge. And that's, that's, I'm just looking for people who, who kind of feel that, they sense that. Very often the people I'm, I'm helping build their networks are people who, they already find that they're making introductions to people for no reason other than I know that, hey, Simon, you should talk to so-and-so, right? Because I think it'll be good for both of you. I just have that feeling. Um, I love the idea. And uh, many times this, the, the good things are so simple that most people just overlook them. So, and this sounds, sounds like one of that. And so what, what can go wrong, basically? You, you you need to have the first five to eight people. You you take the people you you like most, and mm -hmm. what are the criteria? Uh, what should you consider as a criteria? So no competitors, just complementary, or everybody from one field, or just random. That that's really there's no one answer to that. That's something that I would you know kind of help everybody individually figure out. But um, again, you have to keep in mind the goal here. Right. This is not a peer group. It's not a CEO peer group. Right? It could be CEOs are in it. But so it's not a peer group where people are going to be, you know, you're going to have maybe only six people from different geographies. So they're not competing in any way. Let's say um, it's not a BNI networking group. OK, I, I, in this sense, it really is probably inspired by Penn Gillette's group. He hand selected people. I mean, I don't know how much you, you come across Penn and Teller. Right. No. It's, uh, so Penn, Penn and Teller, they're the, I think they're the longest running show or certainly the longest running magic show, but it might be the longest running show in Las Vegas right now. They're just extended for another, I think, four years. They've been working together as magicians, I think, for about 40 years now, more than 40 years. Uh, and he's just a real character, you know, a real character. Um, Penn talks and Teller is, he's, he's quiet, doesn't talk. So, uh, it, he just it's about deciding who amongst my friends do I want to have in this in this uh, network you know and they've got to meet certain standards like I, I turned away somebody who I'm guessing is worth about a hundred million dollars uh, just a couple of weeks ago 
because we were talking about the JVMM and you know he he'd founded a startup in the 2000s I believe and uh, he sold it I think about 10 years ago for I, I think about 300 million 30 million dollars 330 I think it was um, so I'm figuring he he had investors uh, and and the uh, the IRS so he had to pay off you know, give away a lot of that but let's say he ended up with 50 to 100 million right so recently he decided, you know, he started work, you know, building a little business as more of a, a mentor and coaching and consulting space. And he's looking, someone that introduced us, he's looking for to get at, get out more and be, you know, be promoted by others and grow his, his audience and list. So it made a lot of sense, right? Connect with great people. Um, so we were talking and it went really well. And then just like, you know, he was actually just getting his card to sign up, which it's a thousand, two thousand dollars a year. It's not a lot at all. Um, and he said to me, would you promote me? And I said, probably. I didn't think about it very much. Like, would you promote me to your list? Probably. And I was just really focused on getting finished because I had another meeting coming in in a minute, right? Um, another, you know, Zoom, someone else will be, you know, on Zoom. And I, um, um, so I, but suddenly his whole attitude changed. He's like, well, if you're not willing to commit that you'd promote me, then how do I know that, that this is worth anything or that, that everything is what you're going to say? And we had to continue afterwards because my other meeting came out. So he emailed me and said, look, I'm not trying to be difficult. I've, I've been screwed before. How do I know that, um, you're like, you know, kind of convince me that this is really worth it. And I, I could sense that he wasn't getting the big idea. He wasn't getting what this is about. So I said to him, look, I don't feel the need to convince you of anything. You know, I talk to people all the time about this and some of them, they get it. They see the value. They realize that I do want to be a part of a network of these kinds of people because it gives me an opportunity to interact with them, to build relationships that are mutually beneficial. And, you know, and, and other people feel like not for me. And that's totally fine. Like if you don't feel that it is for you, totally fine. If you do feel it is for you, then let's make sure to talk again because I, I think we need to make sure we're on the same page if you, you know, and he didn't respond. And that's just, you know, like I was not going to change the standards or because that curation is so important. It could be somebody doing low six figures could have, could be more valuable to the rest of the group than somebody who sold a hundred million dollar business who has the wrong attitude. So that is the biggest mistake that I think people make. And the easiest mistake to make is to accept the wrong people. Yeah. I had this a couple of times when, when interacting with people and I feel pressure in, in a very early interaction, then something, something's wrong. Either, either the person is playing it too transactional, like too linear, mm -hmm. uh, or, or has not an abundance mindset in terms of when I meet people, I first try to give and then it will evolve. And at some point they want to give back because it's a natural thing when you get a lot of value. You will you will feel the normal urge to to balance that right? right but you don't start with okay what do you give to me <laughs> hello i'm here what do i get <laughs> he had already sent he'd already seen about um i have a page with like about 11 videos from some from some of our members and and he saw that i don't know how many he watched but he emailed me he's like yeah you got some really good stories there some good you know and i, I just have that I don't even have a like there's nowhere somebody could really go and and sign up on their own i mean i i don't you know you can't do that. that's not what it's about um so he'd already seen that he'd been exposed to members he talked to me and if that's not enough that to to risk a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a year for somebody who i don't you know they're even if he's only worth 10 million dollars it's like it doesn't matter like, he'd still be one of the wealthiest in the group not you know at that price he wouldn't be the wealthiest but he'd be one of the wealthiest and it, it's like you don't get it if you don't get it i don't care who you are right you don't belong here and how do you keep the community engaged and uh, because it could be that they just they sleep away right and they it, it the email if it's mainly email as i hear mm -hmm. that could land in some gmail folder that says mm -hmm. communities or or, or, or well, look, and how the way I, the way i do it is there's, a, there, there's no one answer to that. I mean, there's a number, we have a number of different processes that I've developed over the years. And this is also part of what I started to realize like, yeah, okay, I've got, there's, I, I can save people a lot of time and figure things out. But the, the, part of it is philosophical and part of it is tactical, right? So you have to approach it philosophically from the recognition that I'm not trying to control people, right? 
I think that is that's another mistake that people make. They think that I have to have everything. Um, I think that that you, if you were to ask our members, I think that they would say that that they they get a sense that the that the group is very well led, very well run, that there's structure to it, but there's plenty of fluidity. Like there's plenty of independence. Like I. If I lead my members to feel that being a member in my network is a chore that gives them more things that they have to do, well, that's going to work against everybody because now they're going to not get to it, right? Um, so what, what it really has to do is that my goal is that everybody feels that it's a, it is there for them to the degree that they want it to be there. My goal is that, that everybody is 100xing their investment at least every year. Right, and I ran it for free for until you know about a year and a half ago. Honestly, I was running it for free, and I only. But we got so big, and I felt I needed to know who really wants to be there, so we introduced uh, uh, the uh, you know modest annual fee. Um, I run it for free because I benefited so much, you know, just from other people. Like my, all my business was coming through these relationships and and cross promotions that we were doing. So um, I think that philosophically, you have to realize like, it's not like. I want, I'll tell you another story, maybe answer the question. We had a member going back a few years and she had been very quiet, hadn't been on any of the, the group calls in at least a year, hadn't you know joined up in any of the email conversations. And um, I'm, I know she was doing business with some people, but like it, it was invisible to almost everybody else. And she sent out an email promoting somebody else in the group's paid weekend workshop. And we're all marketers, we all sell things. So none of us are shy about like, we don't care if you want to tell us something that's paid, that's totally fine. It's just that like Stephen Covey talks about the emotional bank account, right? Like where did this come from suddenly, right? So I actually got a couple of emails privately saying, hey, what was that all about? So I emailed her, I said, look, you know, I'm really happy that, that you popped up um, and uh, feel free you know, hopefully going forward, you want to you'll be more, I just want you to be aware that I got a bit of a, of a reaction, you know, and here's why. So she said, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I've been meaning to be more active. Uh, I'll, I, I'll, I'll be more active going forward. And I said, let me clarify. That wasn't my point. I don't, I don't care if you're active or not. Like I, it's not my, I'm not, obviously I, I think you have a lot to gain from being active, but you have to see it, right? If you, if you see this as another chore, that's not what we're looking for. I'm looking for people participating because they believe that I stand to gain by asking a question. I stand to gain by answering a question. The more people are motivated by their own, you know, selfish uh, goals, right? It, I, I don't think that, that, you know, even those of us who genuinely care about other people, and I like to include myself in that, I think we genuinely care about other people and we really do want to make a positive difference for people, not just looking to get somebody to buy something from us. You know, we all also have our own agendas. We, we all, everybody has, nobody's purely, uh, what's the word? Purely, uh, I can't think of the word right now. Right? Altruistic. Altruistic, yeah. yeah, exactly, right? Everybody has, like, you know, I'm happy to help. There are things I also need, things I also want. And anybody who says otherwise, I don't trust them. Right. So. Uh, yeah, I want to dig deeper what is participation in your groups. But first, we have to go to the segment that we call the award. The award. OK. If you could only pick one person from your networks or not, who when yeah. everybody is zigging, they are zagging. Who is that person? Um. This is hard because there's so many people I could I could point to really, but um, I'll, I'll I'll give that to John Goldman from MyTurningPoint.com, and he is he's just doing some remarkable work, very under the radar type person, um, and he's just doing some remarkable work with uh, entrepreneurial businesses, you know, businesses that are you know multi million dollar, multi tens of million dollars, or even bigger, and just really often working with the founder, the CEO and their spouse, um, the, the, the senior team in, in a very, you know, a very, um, very intimate kind of way in, in the sense that like, people really go through a personal transformation. And I just, you know, I, he's a friend, he lives nearby. And so I've, I've gotten to talk to him and, and see, you know, a little, uh, firsthand what, what he's up to. Um, and like you said earlier, 
it's really it is a lot of it's the simple things it's not it's not the rocket science that makes the big difference for most of us it's it's being able to listen to what your wife or team member is actually trying to say it's them being able to listen to what you're actually trying to say it's uh, you getting clear about what do you actually want you know i always feel like it's just remarkable that you think that the one question that should be easy for any human being to answer is what do you want? And it turns out it's one of the hardest questions for people to answer. What do you want? So I'd say John Goldman from myturningpoint.com is, is doing great work. Thank you. And now participation. So just selling is not participation in your groups. What is participation? Do, do people tell each other, hey, I have this problem when they have the problem or do they meet in in a regular way and they discuss different things and it's everything uh, it's uh we have group discussions via email we have a monthly uh 90 minute zoom call that that we come prepared with a, an agenda sometimes the agenda is full sometimes it's loose right we do not bring in outside experts we've got more than enough experts inside uh and i i really think that this is not you know in the networks, I'm not saying there's no place for that in perhaps uh, some some variation of the Alchemy Network. So I, I like to keep an open mind to creative ideas, but everything has to be rooted in principle and, and understanding the goal that that you're trying to accomplish as the leader of this network. Like how is it trying to, to, to move things forward for you and your members? Um, so you know, people have one-on-one -on -one conversations. We've got small group virtual conversations. I call them the weak tie explosion calls based on research from, I think, the 60s that that uh, shows that most of the, the the kind of the big opportunities that we come across are not necessarily from people that we know really well, but it's people that I haven't seen in five years who I bump into at the store or see mm. on the plane, right? So the, the the concept for me is like that there are people in this network because the network is growing, and you don't it'll, if you're talking to one new one member a week, it'll take you almost two years to talk to everybody, and soon you know that keeps growing, right? So. We, we organize kind of like small speeding things for people within the network. Um, and then people have one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations and they look for ways of supporting each other and promoting each other or getting to know each other. I have another network called the Under the Radar Leaders Network, which I started uh, at the beginning of this year because I'm, you know, as part of the Profitable Relationships company, ProfitableRelationships.com, focusing on helping ordinary consultants be extraordinary, uh, ordinary people be extraordinary consultants. And most of them are looking to grow their own alchemy network. So that's who that's what that network is for. And and um, they're also like we have three members who are literally in three different parts of the world. One is in Atlanta, Georgia. One is in Israel as well. Uh, a client of mine who I've actually never met face to face, even though we're not not a very big, big country. And uh, uh, and some of the third one in South Africa. And they're forming a network together. Right. So. Um, because they've, they've come to you. What I believe probably more than anything else is that when, when you bring good people together, good things happen. And that's, you know, that really, really says it. And uh, I can easily see the mistake people make or it's like they look to grow this to a thousand people, 1500 people. That's a different, that's probably a different strategy. Like that's a different idea. I'm not saying it can't work. Of course it could. I mean, you, you know, you can, Build Facebook groups. I don't recommend using Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups for this type of thing, right? Why not? Yeah. Because um, I recommend email, you know, email-based, Google-based, uh, go a Google group-based uh, or something like that. Because for the most part, um, it's more intimate. Uh, Facebook groups, you go on Facebook and we're just completely, you know, like, I, I sometimes have a legitimate business reason to go on Facebook. And then 30 minutes later, I shut it down and I suddenly remember why I went to Facebook, right? Yeah, and same here. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. And, and LinkedIn is your... terrible. And Slack yeah. is not for everybody, you know? So that, that, that doesn't mean that, that it can't work. So like, I'm sure that one of my clients will soon say, I'm, I'm going to do it on Slack. And they'll make it work. And good for them. I, like I, I said, I really believe in principle over tactic. Yeah. What? I was thinking if I started, if I start something like that, I would go slack. Okay. And, but also on an emotional level, you are so connected to the whole world. And uh, for me, this became, this became very, can, can you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. For, for me, because my, my ear was doing some, some noise. Uh, for me, this became right now in March with the first lockdown, uh for the first week i felt so isolated 
and I was used to fly in five cities in one week. And from one day to the other, I was grounded here at home. So <laughs> I felt so isolated. And mm. then I said, okay, how do I, how do I cope with it, basically? Okay, mm -hmm. roll with punches. You have a show, Simon. It's a weekly show. You are talking to people. They are all grounded. You could go daily now. You could talk to eight people per day. And I did it. So on some days, I had five guests. On some days, I had eight guests. Wow. I loved it. I, and then I, I go to dinner, and I tell my kids, today I was in Australia. I was in San Diego. I was in a town that I don't even know where it is, but it was so right. cool. And so I started connecting to people. And now my friends say uh, I'm a cyborg because if they say, hey, do you come for lunch? I say, no, 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 no. I have a meeting with Australia, one with Norway and one with San Diego at that time. And, uh, and I enjoy it so much. So uh, it's so techno technically easy to connect. And it is so important. It, 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 it gives so much on so many levels. We feel that we are interdependent. We can give and take. This is the idea of a town, of a community. In my street, I don't know everybody, and we do not exchange value uh, every day. Yeah. But uh, I can do it through the podcast. And this is, yeah, so I'm, I, I, what's, what's your, you started much earlier, right? What is your take? How are you locally and globally living relations? Well, I mean, I, I've been doing version this for 10 years or longer, really, and it's because I, I'm, most of my business was outside of Israel. Um, I, you know, I grew up in New York, uh, and I've been living here for many years. So I had to do it online. You know, this is you know pre-Zoom. We were doing tele, tele, teleconferences. Or you know, like, I forgot what systems I was using. Um, I remember, I don't know, about six years ago, maybe it was five, six years ago. Somebody in my JVMs uh, wanted to meet with me on Zoom. And I thought, like, we have got Skype. What do we need Zoom for? And I switched immediately because I hated Skype. But it was the only thing I knew, right? Sk Zoom is everything Skype could have been, but never was. You know, like that was a real mess up. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's 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 fantastic. I actually was traveling more last year and was planning to travel more this year. But uh, you know, best best of plans, right? Absolutely, Dov. Who should be my next guest? I would, I'd recommend. You mentioned Malta earlier. I'm not sure why, but um, I actually have a friend. Who lives on Malta, uh, and so it's not that far from you. Kind of like you know, I, I guess if we draw draw a uh, right angle triangle between us, uh, maybe more or less, um, he would be at at the corner, the the base there. Uh, Matthew Kimberly, and just a really good guy. I you know I I suggest you you have him on. I'll, I'll introduce you. See if you see if he's interested. Probably is. Um, and I was also thinking you're from Italy. Uh, um, I have another colleague member, and uh, her name is Alinka Rutkowska, and she's in southern Italy. I forget exactly where, but um, really interesting person. And she she runs a company called Leaders Press, uh, leaderspress.com, and she's just been really on fire, you know. And, and she's uh, she joined our, our my network at the beginning of this year, and she's just a doer. Like she hears an idea from somebody, she's on almost every um, every call, and. She's just doubled her, her business, uh, uh, maybe even more by now, because she hears an idea, implements it. So it's on fire. So I just think that she's doing great work and good person. Love it. Hey, Dov, I learned so much from you. And uh, I feel that you brought so many insight and so applicable things that everybody can start right now. So please, people, check it out. It's profitablerelationships.com. And uh, Dov, come back soon. Thanks for having me. We all know that working in sprints is better, but how do we know what we should work on? You're in luck because we have a 15 minute exercise that will give you complete clarity on where to take your project next. Go to strategysprints.com slash sales to complete our short exercise and meet one-on-one -on -one with an expert sprint coach to identify your number one bottleneck. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that episode of The Strategy Show. Make sure to like this video below and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with every episode of The Strategy Show. Get daily CEO tips from CEOs for CEOs.